Hey, I'm happy to introduce uh, Farmall, actually Case IH, 75 horsepower or roughly equivalent to 75 horsepower electric tractor. They're going to start taking orders on them this fall. I had no idea this was coming. First time I've ever seen it. Just walked in here first thing to the show this morning. Uh, this tractor here, you can tell it's had some experience. The front tires are worn, the rear tires are worn. They've been testing this thing for a long time. It's got several features that, that I think will be interesting to us. Um, given the select track that you've seen at our property and some of the weaknesses that you've seen, this one um, has a, a charging port here, a standard charging port. If you use regular AC charging, five hour charge time, but it comes with, if you're willing to invest enough money, a, a, a DC fast charge option, which you can charge in an hour. Okay, so you could charge it over your lunch break. Supposed to run four hours in most configurations. I think if you put a, a, a really large implement on it that pulls it really hard, it's gonna be less than that. We really don't know too much, but for loader work, they're, they're estimating about four hours. It's got some autonomous features. Now, not really autonomous. You, you, you can't just get out of the cab. It's got several different uh, ap approaches towards autonomy. It's got a, a safety mode, and that means if anyone gets close to the tractor, it'll shut down or won't let you get close to someone. It's got a, a mode that's interesting called follow me. So you can be working in front of the tractor and have the tractor keep up with you. Let's say you want to keep your tools in your bucket and, and you want to move along a fence line to do some work. Or let's say you want to open a gate. Okay, You don't have to get in the tractor and out of the tractor multiple times because you can, you can just go up there and the tractor will follow you through. I guess like your, your, your little dog, I don't know. But uh, that's, that's a pretty neat feature. Uh, it's got a row follow mode. Okay, and that's meant for a vineyard application to, to try to keep you in that, in, in the rows. I don't really think it's, it's well suited for 30 inch rows to try to do uh, uh, Midwestern row crop applications. I don't, I don't think that's the objective. And my favorite, um, I don't even think it's autonomy mode, but my favorite feature, they've got enough cameras on this thing that they can make the bucket invisible. <laughs> yeah, so they, they basically, uh, on the display can show the machine without the bucket. So you know how the loader can cause some visibility issues when you're trying to see what's going on in front of you. But with all these cameras, they can kind of stitch them together and they can allow you to see just like your, your bucket isn't there. I'm sure it's not absolutely perfect. There'll probably be edges of it showing or something. But the point is, is that could really improve visibility. And now I need the opposite. I want a camera actually showing what I'm doing with my bucket because when I get it down in the front, I can't, uh, I can't see what I'm, what I'm loading or what it, where my forks are when I'm trying to connect. But maybe they'll get that in the next generation. You bring along your own generator, 15 amp, 110, 25 amp, I believe, on the 240 volt. So that's a, that's a nice feature there. If you want to power something, power something easily. Now let's talk a little bit about how this tractor is um, structured, right? We had some issue with our electric tractor because the PTO would spin backwards. Some things weren't working quite perfectly. Well, this thing is equipped with a standard 1212 power reverser. Um, it's essentially the same tractor from the motor, from, from, from the tail end of the motor on back. It's essentially the same tractor as the 75 horse farm all that's um, non-electric, right? That's diesel powered. There's been a few changes. The hydraulic motors have been optimized a little bit to be quieter because there's no noise, right? And so the, the, the initial reports have been talking about how quiet the machine is. But just like on our select track, you can hear the hydraulic motors, you can hear what's going on there. So they've done some work to make those hydraulics quieter. Now, What's kind of left unsaid there is that this machine is going to perform in the same fashion you're used to, right? So it's got 12 speeds forward, 12 speeds reverse. It's got a shuttle shift, um, just like uh, most tractors of this class. Your PTO is going to operate the same way. You're going to have a throttle to change the RPM of the electric motor. Um, PTO is going to work forward reverse. It, it's it's going to feel like a traditional tractor, except you're not going to hear anything. Again, they're going to start taking orders this fall. They haven't talked about pricing. You know how that goes. Can't get anybody to talk about pricing on these things. It's supposed to be shipping next spring. I'm looking forward to seeing one of these. Maybe I can get them to loan me one. Hey, this is new. 
Case IH subcompact tractor. I believe this is the 25SC subcompact. And behind me here is the 25A, 225 horsepower tractors. It's new because it's Case IH. Um, there's not a lot new under the covers. This is the same uh, rebranded LS that we see from New Holland and the same tractor we see from LS as well, both in the subcompact as well as a larger frame 25 horsepower. They refer to it as an economy model. For several years now, Case has not had anything smaller than say 35, 40 horsepower. Um, so this is kind of uh, coming back to, to their roots a little bit. Back in the day, uh, International Harvester had some really nice little tractors and uh, so this is, um, this is getting back to it a little bit. Again, made by LS, but uh, available at your Case IH dealer. We're here at the New Holland version of this same tractor that we've been looking at at the Case IH booth. Uh, and we're th also three days into the show now. So I've been able to, to dig around and uh, do some investigative reporting and learn some more information about this tractor. It's essentially the same tractor as what we're talking about in the first part of this episode, but I've learned more about that tractor as well. So I mean, uh, just more information here to share. Maybe I'll start with this charging station here. This is a 240 volt charging station. Uh, it's an 80 amp input. Uh, this one takes about five hours to charge the tractor. Now I found out that there is a one hour charge. And when I talked to the engineer, I could sense some body language that was kind of like uh, one hour in certain situations. I, I didn't, first I didn't understand that. It's one hour with a, a fast charger that uses three phase power. So you have to have three phase power. Uh, you have to do 120 kilowatts to be able to charge it at that fast charge, uh, one hour charge. And of course that's not available to everyone. That just, just to, to clarify, a typical house will have a 200 amp, 240 volt. Sometimes you'll have a 400 amp if you have a, a larger home or a larger homestead. But that still won't be enough to put in that one hour charging station. So for now, um, if, you're, if you're on a standard house, you have to have a five hour charge time. Uh, if you've got three phase power and want to invest in the upgraded charging station, you can do one hour charge. I learned a little bit more about the technology behind this machine as well. Um, some of the autonomy features, uh, uh, just several of the features are borrowed and shared with the Monarch tractor. My understanding is that Case New Holland is one of the investors in Monarch. I don't know how much they own. We probably could look that up, but it's, they, they are working together on this machine. So largely the stuff at the top of the cab, all the, the sensors, the autonomy, that is borrowed heavily from the Monarch. The battery um, and the motor are larger in this machine than they are in the existing Monarch tractor, but there's still some similarities there. Now, I also found that the battery on these machines is cooled. So there's refrigerant that runs through these batteries to keep them cool. That's gonna keep the, the, the battery running better longer. So in other words, you'll maintain your power throughout the charge cycle. It won't get hot at the end of the discharge cycle like uh, we might see on some other brands. We talked about the upgraded hydraulics on this machine. And when I say upgraded, it's actually made quieter. They're actually gonna let us hear that. So let's see if we can get them to, to get it turned on here. Now this thing's not gonna shock me or something, it is it? It will not shock you, absolutely not. Okay, ready? Yeah. Wow, I don't... I'll bend over here so my microphone can pick it up. Now this is quieter than the small tractor, I believe that we have on our property. It's also not quite as high pitched. It doesn't have quite as uh, annoying of a, of a sound. And that's all that we're gonna hear. Even if we're pulling hard, that's all we're gonna hear out of this so tractor. So as we go up in, in uh, RPM. RPM. Okay. Okay, go up and then down. Now on this machine, the hydraulics run all the time while the power is on, right? Correct. So you, you will hear that uh, at any time and the, and the hydraulics are ready at a moment's notice. So it doesn't go into a standby mode where you have to wait on the hydraulics to, to wake up to be able to use the machine. The color scheme here on the New Holland, this is product color scheme. I guess there's a couple of small changes. 
The little blue on the rim here is, uh, is extra fancy that's not going to be there. But this is product. What we saw on the case, that's not product. That was just a show demo. And I, I think I've seen some comments already that they liked that. In the new Holland case, it's going to production like that. So just like the case tractor, taking orders this fall, you can go order it in October. Um, delivery, Q1 of next year. Hopefully there's no delays. You know, like the, like the case version, this one has some wear on the tires. These have actually been used. This is not, this is not just, uh, you know, prototype tractors here. These are, these are actually usable machines. This is rare for a trade show. Can't run a diesel tractor in the show. They're actually gonna let us experiment with the loader a little bit just to see how fast it is. These loader locks will be product. I can tell the way they're made, so it's not just a temporary thing for the show. Nice size buddy seat and actually room for my knees. Uh, large cab for this size tractor, it really is. Okay, we wanna see the loader. Now we are at low RPM here, right? Okay. Is that fast as it goes there? That's fast enough. Oh, that was midway here. Oh, there's full throttle right there. What is the flow? 48. 48 liters? Yes. 15 gallon? 17, 18 gallon? It's four right there. Sorry, I'm American. <laughs> so that's our, our high visibility panel so you can see your loader. See, I can actually see the bucket way up there. Yeah. That's, that's nice. The, the joystick feels very smooth. There's a, there's a little bit of a, 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 a feature that you have to positively engage it. And it, it so you're, you're not going to accidentally make it move. And, and then it is very smooth to adjust, uh, you know, how aggressive you're moving it up and down. Same with tilt and curl. Um, it's got two displays. Uh, one display here is clearly a GPS display uh, for some of the autonomy. The other display is showing just tractor basic features, you know, battery levels, uh, the current RPM of the motor, what gear you're in, some, some items like that. They really don't want us to, to try to go into detail on the software features of the displays because this one is old, quite frankly. They brought it to the show and they've had several software updates since what they've got on this machine. And so they want to make sure that we, when, when they actually show it to customers, um, that they show an up-to-date version, right? So they, they, don't want to, they don't want to show this prototype screen, which makes perfect sense to me. I'm just going to say that it's a high-resolution display. Um, both of them are high resolution display uh, and, and in that sense they look uh, very nice. Uh, the features are, are wonderful. The cabin here overall is very luxurious. This is an, an incredibly nice machine. Uh, this, it's got shuttle shift just like we, we talked about before, 1212 power shift. Um, that's parked there where I'm going to leave it. Um, it. It's very, very comfortable. One thing I noticed quickly is that the joystick for my taste is a little bit uh, too far forward uh, when I have the seat all the way back but uh, this other than that I mean this just this just feels like a luxurious machine hey if you have any questions let us know in the comments section below we're not trying to push electric technology we're trying to tell you what's new and what's available um, like the old Fox News that was reputable used to say we report you decide we're trying to provide as much information as we can on these machines in a way that you can can understand and apply it to perhaps your situation. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. We'd be happy to hear them. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. Those who work their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasies have no sense. So it's spinning now? I, I don't even hear it. Uh, 540 or 1,000? It isn't 540. I can put in 540 for Oh, you can have either one? Yeah, we have 540 540E. 540 540E, 540 okay, great.